One of my oldest friends has this dislike, I suppose, of what I refer to as the herd. Um, I guess he would call it, or I would call it, ochlophobia, which is dislike of the mob, the, um, the big mass of society, the herd but using the word herd in a pejorative sense, not just as a group of animals or a group of beings that instinctively, just because it's their nature to do so, bond together and, as it were, create their own reality. In terms of creating their own society with its own rules, its own hierarchies and things like that. <clears throat> he seems to have the idea that sheeple, um, that um, uh, people who just blindly follow uh, the rules are nothing but lemmings. And I understand that. Um, I get it. Because in several really nasty instances in the 20th century, and several ones that I don't think people realized, the herd mentality did take over in certain societies, and the results were absolutely catastrophic. They did produce a civilization that, in my opinion, simply wouldn't have been worth living in. Um, first example, I suppose, would be uh, Soviet Russia, the USSR under Stalin. People think that that was um, rule of just one man, but it was rule of the panicked mob that was being carefully manipulated by Stalin, where paranoia was jacked up to the absolute maximum, and everybody was suspicious of everybody else, and suspicious and suspicion and panic, or at least repressed panic, are hallmarks of any mob. Um, you'll lynch anybody that you suspect. That's basically what happened. Um, a lot of the mass murders they blame on the Communist Party or on Stalin. A lot of the more thoughtful Russians of the time kind of said, well, we went along with this, didn't we? We, sort of, we wanted to live in a very simple, very great civilization, and this is what Stalin offered us. Absolute moral certainty, absolute ethical, political, economic certainty in every possible way. We wanted this. So Stalin dangled this in front of our eyes, and we bit. We were seduced. That's sort of the hostile view of the Ochlos that just gets easily led around by a demagogue, which is you know somebody who strokes the ego of the of the herd. Another obvious example is Hitler. Same thing, and both Hitler and Stalin arguably led their countries right off the cliff because all the catastrophes that stuck that struck Russia. Um, after communism fell and during the period of his rule um, were pretty horrible. Um, people lived kind of in darkness during the period of Stalin's rule but you know people knew that something was happening that they might not wa have wanted to face people disappearing in the middle of the night rumors of gulags and executions and everything and just a general sticky fear that stuck to a, you, you at every moment of your life. You simply couldn't get away from it ever, not even in your own house, not even in your own thoughts. <clears throat> Something Orwellian about Stalin. Same thing about the Chinese Cultural Revolution when a society went mad and was turned into a raving mob. Um, a lot of people are saying that in a certain sense the United States is, is sort of somewhat right now go, um, devolving into two separate mobs competing with each other and neither one of them look terribly impressive uh, the more extreme or strident left and the more extreme or strident right are now at daggers drawn at least overtly in the United States it's peaceful so far so far that's kind of the hostile view of the mob the mob will just get whipped up by some idiot with a sharp tongue or some genius with a sharp tongue and next thing you know we've got Auschwitz or we've got the Gulag or we've got society collapsing into just an orgy of cannibalistic violence and um, denunciation and everything, China during the Cultural Revolution or democratic Kampuchea. Ochlophobia. This is what we get when we let the mob take control of things. This is what, this is what the mob really wants is to run riot. Uh, the mob wants to launch the bomb at whatever enemy it is, or the mob wants to get whipped up into a frenzy and find out who to really hate and then charge into, you know, the equivalent of the Jewish ghetto and kill all those thought criminals or those communists or whatever we want to call it. It's just, you know, the mob in the worst sense of things 
is what my friend equates to the general run of society. <clears throat> I'm not sure that I share his view, and I, in a, as diplomatic a sense as I can, I often put that to him. I said, look, they're simply acting according to their own nature. It might not be nice, but human nature isn't nice. We're a conflicted species, aren't we? Like, oftentimes this judging of the general mass of people exists in some sort of exists side by side with some sort of ideal as to what the herd or the public or the demos or the people should be. Um, should the mob be something other than itself? Should the, the herd be something other than itself? I asked this question before. Should the um, should people be forced to think? Well, if you're forced to think, you might discover stuff, like, i.e., that your illusions are gone, that your illusions were illusions, and you have nothing else. Is the herd leading us off a cliff, or is the herd simply being itself, and it's just going to do what it's going to do with no real value placed on it one way or another? It's hard to explain, or it's hard to actually interpret, I think. I don't place any value on the herd. I just sort of say it simply is. Um, I don't like lynch mobs any more than anybody else does. Um, but I don't think that the herd is automatically a blind, vicious lynch mob. Um, which is why I tend to not be quite so suspicious of things like consumer capitalism or um, the latest gadget addiction where you see you get on a bus or go into a cafe and everybody's staring into their gadget. You sort of think, ooh, that gives me the creeps, but all right. Would you rather they were staring into their devices or would you rather they were, I don't know, burning the ghetto? Um, what is the herd supposed to be? What is its obligation to be? What, what's its purpose? What is its mandate? What, what are its rules? What must it do to justify its own existence? Um, I don't like terms like sheeple, although I, I kind of think that way a lot. As I say, I, I go into coffee shops a lot, and I often just sit there staring into space thinking about things. But I know how a lot of people just sort of gawk into their devices. Now, I, it doesn't really disturb me, but it gives me pause sometimes, because I'm seeing sort of a paradigm shift in our civilization where religion we put behind ourselves as an anchor in, uh, in Canadian society at least. Um, religion has been removed more or less from Canadian society at least in the public sphere. Religion is generally kept more or less private now, probably the same as in Europe. It still exists. But we've got another religion that has crept in that is far more all-encompassing than the original religion religions that we are sort of drifting away from now. And that's, I guess, hyper-reality or post-modernity or something like this. It's just a big carrot now that everybody is chasing all over the place, and chasing the carrot is an end in itself. Is this a bad thing? What else is the herd supposed to do? If it doesn't want meaning, it wants distraction and activities. Why not give it what it wants? You might think that that's pretty brain rotting to sit there and stare into a device all day or, you know, to wait for the latest meme or talk about the latest reality TV show. But it's certainly not harming anybody unless, of course, you are the sort of person who's suspicious of the Donald Trumps of the world who are using this media to manipulate everybody. Um, are we capable of standing up to that? Is that really just going to... Is, the, is our gadgets going to turn us into another lynch mob or are they going to sort of sedate everybody and give us what we want to make us harmless, I suppose, and happy. Um, <clears throat> what's the best way to control the herd, the mob? Brave New World or 1984, and which is which? Um, either way, I think that I don't share my friend's ochlophobia. I think that, um, I think that, like everything, it has a dual or a multiple nature, infinite number of natures. It is and it isn't a lynch mob. It is and it isn't a, a wonderful um, group of peaceful people. Um, it simply is, I suppose. 